If I'm our nominee, how is Hillary Clinton going to lecture me about living paycheck to paycheck? I was raised paycheck to paycheck. How is she, how is she going to lecture me? How is she going to lecture me about student loans? I owed over $100,000 just four years ago. If I'm our nominee, we will be the party of the future. That was Senator Marco Rubio just a short time ago with an attack on Hillary Clinton that doubled as a focus on his own blue-collar credentials. Joining me now with his thoughts on the evening, Charles Krauthammer, syndicated columnist and Fox News contributor. Charles, you thought that was an important moment. Tell us why. And I thought, well, I thought the whole debate was a great debate. Uh, and you rarely say this. That they're usually completely overhyped and end up like the Super Bowl, a snooze. This was gripping right through. And I've been thinking about why that is. I think because it was controlled, it was very tight, and the questions were exceptionally sharp. And, and, and the proof of that is this. Think of how few times you had to ring the bell. Normally in these debates, the candidates talk on and on. They play their old uh, tape recorders in their heads with the stump speech. There were so many times here where the candidates actually stopped short and left time because the questions were so sharp, they actually wanted to answer and to get away from the question. And one of the, and I think as a result of that, the real story is, is the collapse of Trump in this debate. It, I, I thought this before I saw the Lutz group, but I think it's reinforced. The fact is he was out of place. And when you think about it, when he's free form, when he's uninterrupted, when he can do the, uh, the flight of ideas, when he can go on on his own and ramble, he's, he's entertaining, he's sharp, and uh, he's actually amusing. But here, when he was controlled and in a tight setting, he was lost for most of the debate. And I think it showed that th he was in a group of professional politicians whom he mocks, and yet they, as a group and individually, were able to handle it and to be sharp and persuasive most of the time, but they left him out in the cold. Rubio, there were some winners here. I would say I thought Carson, until the last two questions, also looked relatively weak, unable to answer some of the questions. But his closing statement was a brilliant one, and I think it redeemed his evening. But overall, I think the winners were Cruz, Rubio, and Huckabee and Christie because of the way I think he bested Rand Paul in the debate about uh, eavesdropping and national security. That thing you showed of Rubio, I thought, was the best expression of his campaign and it was the best way to, to take on Hillary. The other striking thing is how little she came up in the debate. Obama did to some extent but she hardly uh, did it all. That, I found, was remarkable. When you say the collapse of Trump, what, what specifically do you think went into that? I mean, what specifically did you see tonight uh, in that more controlled environment that you think hurt him? Well, when he didn't have a chance to change the subject, to ramble on to something else, and had to stick to the question, and when he didn't, it was obvious that he was dodging. He was testy. Uh, he was thin-skinned. Uh, he was honest. I grant him that. And when you asked the first question about whether he would support or not the candidate, that really hurt him in the audience and perhaps uh, in the more general Republican audience. But he didn't flinch, and he was straightforward about that. But I think when it, it came to substance, uh, there was no substance. You ask him about General Soleimani, he didn't have a clue. Now, that's a detail. It wasn't a gotcha question. But it showed, I think, that if you're not involved in the issues and you don't study up, as some of the candidates did, and you think that you're above that, uh, it hurts you. And I think it did hurt him. I thought he had a, a bad night. Whether it'll uh, reflect in the polls, I have no idea. But I thought uh, it was not a night. That was supposed to be his night. The expectations were particularly high, so I think he's hurt on account of that, but I thought he had a flat night and the one that uh, I'm not sure he's going to like. Uh, he's probably sending out a mean tweet about you right now, and, and me too, which he threatened to do, so well, well, shore I'm, up, I'm, my friend, shore up. 
I'm sure he is, but I think it shows for all of the anti-politician atmosphere in the country, it shows the value of knowing the issues and being a practice speaker. Charles, great to see you. Thank you. Back now with the takeaway from the front line, my co-hosts, Chris Wallace, anchor of Fox News Sunday, and Brett Baer, anchor of Special Report. Great to see you guys. That was fun. <laughs> that was so fun, wasn't it? We got through it. If people only knew how much work went into that, <laughs> they, they would not believe or what kind of a day we have had. That's true. Um, I, what did you think of Trump? Because I, I will say in his defense, he did, I understand all the points that they were making, but one gift he has that is underrated is his humor. He's funny. So at the end, when Huckabee was delivering that closing statement, and he starts going down this litany of things, and I saw Donald Trump's face, and he was just getting very stern, and then Huckabee delivers the Hillary Clinton punchline, yeah, yeah. and Trump <laughs> grabbed Thank himself, you. and like, you. yeah, and I thought that was funny. He does turn it to humor a lot. I do agree that this wasn't his best performance, but he was fielding some really tough questions. Yeah, and, and he's never done it before. And we were not, you know, we were not holding back on any of that. Correct. I, I felt that it was almost two different debates for Donald Trump. Um, I thought he did quite well in the first hour. And one of the things that shocked me, in fact, I thought to a certain degree he dominated because when we started asking him about illegal immigration, which is certainly a hot topic, and I expected some of the other candidates to go after him. I asked Kasich about it, expecting him to sort of take on Trump. And instead he went, you know, I understand Donald Trump. I understand what he's tapping into. I understand the dissatisfaction. Somebody else down the line, I forgot whether it was Christie or Rubio, said the same thing and I thought they're kind of scared of Trump's support uh, and I thought at that point boy they're uh, they're kind of scared of, of, of the following the Trump has as the debate went on and there were a series of questions on specific issues I thought that he faded and uh, and you could begin to see the crowd turning on him. I also have to say, although we did get kind of applause at the crowd, we all identified that the, that the single biggest news question that we had to ask was, are you going to support the Republican nominee or not? I mean, this is a Republican debate. It's at the, on the stage where the f Republican convention is going to be held in 11 months. And when he refused to do that, you could certainly, and it was fascinating to see in Luntz's focus group, yeah. Republican voters don't like that. And we didn't know if we, we didn't know what he was going to say. We had a follow up, you know, either way. And then there was the question that I asked him, the opening question, which again, we spent a lot of time talking about because it was very hard hitting and it raised some dicey issues. He made a joke out of it by saying it was only Rosie O'Donnell. Personally, I wondered how that will play with female viewers and voters because Rosie O'Donnell is is a woman. Uh, she is not the things that he called her, and women find those remarks offensive. So he tried to dismiss it with humor, uh, and then kind of dodged on the other stuff. You know, I think winners tonight, Senator Rubio, I think Mike Huckabee had a good night of framing things the way he could frame them. He's obviously done this before. In 2008, he was always seen as somebody who could debate well. I think he did well tonight. Uh, I think Ben Carson landed at the end mm. pretty well. Mm. As we've been doing these gymnastics analogies and in yeah, preparing dismount. our questions, like, how do I dismount? What's a dismount? <laughs> yeah. He stuck the landing. He did. Yeah. And I, I, I would say, that in term, excuse me, in terms of winners, I think Marco Rubio did very well and again you know and he's been fading in the polls made the argument I'm the candidate of change I'm the candidate of the 21st century I thought you know for his voters Mark uh, Cruz really said in effect I'm the serious conservative forget Trump I'm the really serious I thought Rand conservative. Paul was, was very fiery tonight too and one see, he did not seem as scripted as the other one either. candidate we haven't mentioned and I think it's quite noteworthy Jeb Bush. I mean, Jeb Bush, by all accounts, one would think of as the front runner. He's got the money. He's got the name. He obviously isn't leading in the polls, yeah. but he seemed a little pale, a but, little you know, flat, and it kind of we faded. Said this, we said this on the set. I think everybody had a moment. Some had more moments than others. Mm -hmm. And I do think Rubio had the most moments. Yeah. You know, it was nice because unlike when we had Newt Gingrich out there, nobody yelled at us. He <laughs> 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 must have been a good debate. Great exactly. to see you guys. It was, it's been a pleasure. Nice job. Yeah, Thank you. You too. Thank so you. Much fun. Well, in just moments, Frank Luntz is back with our focus group and their thoughts on the most important moment of the entire night. That's right after this break. Plus, former top White House messaging experts Mark Thiessen and Bill Burton give their take on which candidate made the best impression and why Bill thinks the response to the following question will live on long after tonight. Watch. Would you really let a mother die rather than have an abortion? 
and with 83% of the American public in favor of a life exception, are you two out of the mainstream on this issue to win the general election?